Second Life is an online virtual world where users can interact, create, collaborate and socialise. It is often used in education to facilitate role-playing activities or scenario-based learning that can't be achieved in the real world. Simon Keir is Keeper of the Media Zoo at the University of Leicester in the UK. Simon explains how Second Life was used to help students generate an emergency evacuation plan for an oil rig as part of their study in a fully online Master of Occupational Psychology. Simon outlines the technical considerations of teaching in virtual worlds and explains their potential in the future of education. It was all part of the Duckling project and it was the MSc in Occupational Psychology. The aim of the, uh, the scenario on the uh, oil rig in Second Life was to give the students a more collaborative and immersive learning experience. Second Life is a, a 3D virtual environment and it's a, it's a place that doesn't exist, which is the way I like to think of it, and yet it's so real. As an avatar, you, you can choose pretty much anything you want. You choose your appearance, you choose the way you want to be in, encountered in Second Life. We were going through possible artefacts that could serve their purpose. We came across this wonderful, wonderful oil rig, which had huge potential. It was big, it was open, um, very well built, and that's what we focused on. As it's an oil rig, I put up some workshops with some functioning artefacts within, which gives a little bit of interactivity to the students. It's an environment that is not in no way um, could it be uh, incorporated in the real world? There's no way you can afford to go to an oil rig. There's no way you'd be allowed on an oil rig. Okay, it's a virtual oil rig, um, and it's not exactly the same as a, a real oil rig, but you do still have the same principles. You still have the same idea. They had two purposes when they came on this rig, to work together as a health and safety team and to develop an evacuation plan. I went around and I laid burning barrels, blocked off stairwells, blocked off doors, and set fire to the rig. And then once everything was ready, I pressed the klaxons and at the same time typed into the chat box, evacuate, evacuate. Well, I also had my mic on, so I was saying evacuate, evacuate. This is an emergency. This is an emergency. Please make for stairwell one. Stairwell one. Please make your way to the embarkation point at the boats. Stairwell one. Just wait there, please. Well done, Maris. Wait for me! <laughs> now all the blue helmets are safe. In terms of um, how the learners responded to this experience, they responded very positively. The students said they found it very enjoyable, um, but also quite um, realistic with the klaxons going off having to move quickly, people saying evacuate, evacuate. And it did give them a, a, a feeling, although it was in world as avatars, it did give them a feeling that perhaps, well, definitely they would not have got off paper just reading about it. We lost possibly 30% of the volunteer participants on the project simply through being unable to access Second Life through their hardware or through their bandwidth or the, the network collapsing while they were in world. So it was a demanding technology. The ones that did get in did find it very beneficial. If you are a lecturer perhaps interested in using Second Life, I think you would need some help from someone more experienced. The good thing is there's a lot of experienced people out there. The two main technical challenges are bandwidth. It's a bandwidth hungry technology. When you're in world, it requires a lot of um, broadband. The second major technical challenge is you need good hardware. The costs of working in Second Life are not considerable. If you own a, an island, which is where you need to, uh, to develop your projects, it's about a thousand US a month. And then uh, um, I think it's about 300 US a month just to, uh, to maintain it. To set up a, a client, an avatar in Second Life is free. So it doesn't matter to the student um, or the number of students you have because they can all register for free. In terms of, of pedagogy within Second Life, it's very similar, if not the same, as the Salmon Five Stage model, where the, the same f five stage structure has been applied to, to the virtual world. We felt, or the, the psychologists felt, that perhaps if they were working together in a collaborative environment, actually learning from each other, um, it would actually improve their learning experience. It's about applying the principles they learn on their course 
in a specific environment. As an educational tool, it's fantastic and its potential is huge once these technological challenges are, are overcome. So what I would say is take a punt and have a go, but think of it in 10 years' time. Think of it in, in 15 years' time. Think of 100 meg broadband speeds and a, an expectation from the learner that they're moving away from a lecture scenario to a passive recipient scenario and that slotting into avatars clothes and going to do some learning for half an hour is not that unrealistic. If you can learn, if you can undertake learning in the virtual world that perhaps there are barriers to in the real world, then that's got to be a, a significant advantage.